Apothecary 87. This is the <laughs> live, baby. This is the live. So tonight we are on the Oi Oi podcast. The Johnny Shield Detailing podcast is now crossing over to the Johnny Shield Hair podcast. And tonight I'm joined by none only, we go back far when, from Sam from Apothecary 87. Exciting to get him on tonight. Lots of products, lots of stuff around me. As we know, the detailing community is 98% men and only 2% women. We need to change that. But we're going to bring in Sam in just a second. We're going to have a little bit of chat about business because I think business is something that is universal. And Sam, I know, started this uh, on an idea and we're going to get just bring Sam in a second. But it's really going to be interesting to talk to Sam about business, have a little chat. And there's lots of crossovers. We're all running businesses and it's great to just have these kind of conversations. So let me bring in myself. Let me bring in Sam. Sam Martin from Apothecary 87. Welcome to the show, mate. How are you doing, pal? I'm doing good. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. Very, my, mate, listen, mate, it's absolutely my pleasure, mate. My pleasure. I was excited about this when I got to speak to you again after a few years we haven't spoken. And uh, I was excited, mate. Now I'm in a different place, different different bandwidth. I'm now crossing oh. over to two, two, uh, two industries now. I'm crossing over. So, uh, very exciting terms, but um, tell me what you've been up to, mate. What's going on? Uh, all sorts, mate. I mean, uh, the same as everyone, I guess. The past two years have been a whirlwind, haven't they? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just been like, it, what been, happened? Did something happen to it for the last two years? I can't remember, mate. It went so quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I've, uh, I've been inside a bit. Uh, <laughs> We've uh, we've not seen anyone for a while, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, like but no, it. it's it's um, you know, we're doing a fair bit still. It's uh, uh, things are still going forward for us, but it's uh, it, yeah, it's been it's been so weird how uh, uh, business changed over the past couple of years. It's crazy, absolutely crazy, mate. Two years ago, I was a fully fledged hairdresser, fully booked clientele. COVID hit. Uh, this, well, to be honest with you, mate. It's going to be, we're going to be in lock. When was we on lockdown? Was it literally two years this week that was actually the first lockdown happened? It's got to be, isn't it? It's got to be, surely, because I know it's the end of March. It was the end of March, wasn't it? Just going into my yeah, daughter's well, birthday is the 3rd of April. So we're literally on that cusp now. Yeah, I think I, I was, um, I did an event um, mid April in 2020, and uh, everyone was kind of, it was for the uh, British Chamber, and everyone was talking about, um, you know, what's, what's happening with this COVID thing. And uh, and then came back from it on the Thursday, I think it was, and then the the Tuesday or whatever, we went straight into lockdown. So yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be about then. Yeah, it's absolutely mental, mate, for the times and things that have happened in the industry um, across all all platforms. And you've you've got a solo, you've got a salon now, don't you? You've you've got uh, obviously the the business. Talk me through about where you started with Apothecary because. We go. We were just chatting. I was just off cam, and uh, nine, not twenty thirteen, right? So that's nine years ago now. Yeah, we kicked into kicked into gear, and we were just talking a little bit before before we went live. Um, I, I had this, I had this great little talent in hairdressing of trying to see the trends and how they were going, and I, I decided to grow this beard, and the next minute, beards, well, as you well know, your business just have never stopped since, have they? They have never stopped growing. Literally. Yeah, I mean we. We did well off that. <laughs> I was going to say, because, you know, a lot of trends, by the way, fizzle out pretty quickly. You know, they tend to move quite quickly. But the side part in, the, the, the beards, manscaping, the whole nine yards, mate, has gone absolutely yeah. bonkers since 2013, don't you think? Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think, uh, I mean, beards as a whole, they, they've kind of come and gone throughout history. Um, they've always been a thing. And then sure. they, until they weren't a thing, and then they came back and they were a thing. So, uh, but kind of men's grooming on a whole, I don't think it, it's it's a trend. You know, we've uh, we're looking at how the world's changing these days. You're looking at um, 
how it's evolved even since 2013. And um, people are taking their, uh, you know, their grooming routines to, to new levels. Um, it's, it's not, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a trend. It's just a way of life, I think. And we see that with the people that we're working with, the clients that we have coming in, uh, the people buying our products and uh, some of the resellers that we have as well. Yeah, def- definitely, mate. It's uh, it, it, it's it's something that obviously beards in the seventies, as you well know, ABBA, those kind of eras. You know, it go. You know, you tend to find that uh, it's every twenty years that beards and fashion, or these or fas- fashion in general, is very cyclical, isn't it? Every mm. twenty years, you saw the mullet in two thousand, and then you saw it move on back, coming back into it's creeping back into twenty twenty, but obviously. The mullet coming into fashion in 2000 was obviously a throwback from the 80s. So every 20 yeah. years, you're sort of starting to see that kind of reborn cycle from a new generation thinking they've just started this trend. Um, yeah. So, you know, you look at when you when you were bringing the beards out and stuff, it was, uh, but, you know, the 90s and stuff were very clean shaven, mate. You know, they were very, very fresh, clean shaved, very geometric shapes. So, yeah. to, you know, to go full, cir- full circle into 2013 where – you just saw things starting to become, you know, Beckham with his look and the tattoos and, you know, you know, it's, you, you, know you can yeah, start, to see, start to build. What, even, even when we started, so for, um, for people who don't know Apothecary at Seven, um, when we first started uh, um, as a concept, it was very beard focused. Um, and I, one of the reasons that I started it was because I grew a beard myself. Um, you know, I had, uh, had some... I wanted to look older, long story short, um, for work. Uh, but uh, I, I grew this beard. I remember even in like 2012, 2013, uh, 2011, on the run-up to starting the business, I'd go to these networking events trying to push my uh, my other company at the time that I was running. And um, people come up to me and be like, oh, you're a really handsome lad, if it wasn't for that beard. <laughs> <laughs> like, Cheeky son. What a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I know, exactly, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah even even back cool. then it was a bit cliche to have them, but yeah, now I just think people are are so open to just being themselves, and I, I kind of yeah, I'm down with that. You know, be be who you want to be, dress how you want to dress. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. I definitely think individualism was starting to creep in a long time ago. Um, yeah, you know, and um, just talk me through a little bit about how the brand formed and the idea, because I'm going through a similar process at the moment, which I think is very interesting on a time scale. Uh, yeah. with my business and what I'm doing in the detail industry and what I'm doing with my brand that's oi oi. Um, yeah. And you've got obviously Apothecary 87. Just go through for me at that time, if you can remember that far back, mate, um, what <laughs> the what the things you had to overcome and your inspiration to start with. And just if you, you know, the building mm. blocks, because I think that the fledgling businesses in the early days are, you don't realise how l- much luck is played into it. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, lo- does that make any sense? You know, like an idea or a, or a, you know, you you're very reactive to the environment, aren't you? And thinking, yeah, I think what I I'm going to do you create your luck in that way, but you've got to you've got to be able to identify it. Um, you know, so just kind of running you through where we started from. Path Great Seven was ne- never, I, I never expected it to be what it is these days. Yeah, you know, no, yeah. Um, uh, you can't you can't think like that either, really. I don't think. Yeah, so we, we started out, I was running a, a bar company at the time. Um, we did events and consultancy. Um, and I remember uh, I was quite young. I've got this really good CV when it came to the drinks industry. But I'd go in to do consultancy and tell these bars uh, different ways to improve their, their business. And they kind of look at me like, you, you don't even look old enough to drink. <laughs> so I, I ended up growing my beard to look older. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, you know, it worked. You know, I had this I had this beard. I looked older. I was getting more work. Uh, it was uh, more repeat work from there. Um, so I kind of uh, adapted to that environment. Um, but then uh, I, I kind of realized, like many guys do, that beards get itchy. You know, you're scratching it all the time. And, you know, my skin underneath was really bad. Um, and I ended up uh, looking for some products but obviously men's grooming was, you know, for me at the time, it was body wash, shampoo and deodorant. That was, that was me sorted. Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't know where to look and I, I did some research, came across a product called Beard Oil. Um, and in all honesty, they, they weren't the, 
volume of brands out there that there are now. Um, but I, there were a couple, and I tried them and just didn't get on with them. They, you know, they made my beard itchier or they didn't smell nice, and, and you know, it kind of wound me up a bit. So I, I did some research. I thought, you know what, I can, uh, I can make this. I, it's, what, it's just a cocktail, <laughs> you know, uh, just like I yeah. do at work. Um, yeah. Did some research, made a product, and um, yeah, that was what well, for me at the time. That was that was all it, it was going to be. You know, I had this little bottle of uh, beard oil. I used it. It helped with the dry skin. It smelled nice. Um, and uh, and that was as, as much as I intended the business to be. Uh, off the back of there, it was social media that started kind of growing and people getting in touch and saying, you know, uh, cool beard, what product do you use for it? Uh, and I, this was really, you know, because I was ahead of that that the the peak of that that beard curve or the yeah the start of oh, that you, you nutted it you literally I don't <laughs> I didn't know anybody else was doing it before you you were my first brand you were my first beard brand it was as simple yeah. as that I I think there were maybe like two other people doing it um, yeah uh, and maybe maybe three uh, but th- that was it there weren't the there wasn't a choice you can't get like L'Oreal or something like you can nowadays no um, no no exactly. So, uh, so yeah, social media started picking up and um, people kept saying, you know, what, what product do you use on it? Like, what do you do to, to look after it? You know, give, give us your tips, your hints, your tricks. And yeah. um, I was like, I, I make my own product. And then I started getting at the people saying, can we, can we buy it? I'm like, not really. You know, I <laughs> made this in a mixing bowl with a whisk in my kitchen. You know, it's a, I don't think yeah. I can sell this to you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know if it's even IEA approved. <laughs> yeah, no, right. So it's yeah. Like, I, but people kept asking, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sell it to people. So um, I did research. You know, got on Google. Um, you'd be surprised at what you can learn from Google. You know, people come to you like, how do I do this, that, and the other? Google it. Um, Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, found out what I needed to do, and I found out some um, professionals in the. Uh, uh, in the industry, and then um, I started ringing people up, saying, I'm, "I'm looking at doing this. Can you give me any advice? Can you point me in the right direction?" And um, yeah, before I knew it, I'd I'd got a, a product created, tested, approved. Um, you know, started coming up with the brand ideas and, and everything else around it, and um, uh, yeah, I was ready to roll out from that point. Mental, mate. It's um, <clears throat> you just you know, this is something that's important because. That doesn't always happen all the time. And looking for a niche and something in a business or, you know, looking for... Uh, you get two types of luck in this business. You either find and walk upon something that nobody's doing and you get into it at the right time, a bit like how YouTubers were back in Web point, you know, Web 1.0 kind of thing, you know, yeah. when YouTube first came out and everyone jumped on it and Facebook and those kind of things. or Or you have to try and find something in a business that's thriving, in an industry that's thriving, and be different and try and set yourself apart from the rest. And um, I've kind of found that myself in the detail industry, that it's very much like the hairdressing industry, but of the 80s. And I feel like I I always had this dream back in the day to go back in time so that I could, I mean, like you ever watch Back to the Future where you get the almanac and you can go back and have a look? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and make your money does that make sense you know I've there's, always been been, a, there's, there's some morality questions for you <laughs> I've, al- I've always been a like an entrepreneur at heart really and I think it's um only now is it really starting to starting to come to fruition where I thought I was a hairdresser I thought I was a car detailer I thought I you know back in the day when I used to work in a wedding center I thought I was all these things and I now realize that what I've loved the most is is actually being an entrepreneur. I love business. I love running different yeah. businesses, and it's become really exciting. And it's it's not easy, is it? It's not You're easy. exactly the same as me in that respect, though. I I, I was the same. You know, when I was running the bars, I I love bars from like the age of fourteen. That was my goal yeah, I mean, to have yeah. my own bar. And yeah. um, and then when I started Apothecary Eight Seven, you know, we didn't know it was going to be anything. But um, you know, as, as I kind of started building that brand, yeah. I just thought. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a, a bar owner. I'm not a, a bartender or someone who loves, um, you know, the drinks industry. I'm someone who loves building and creating. And, uh, and yeah, and exactly. Just, you know, that entrepreneurial side of things. I really enjoy that. Yeah, it, it's um, 
I don't think I was ready for it in my twenties. Although I wanted it, I wanted it badly. I wanted to be successful. Um, I've always wanted to be a professional at anything I did. Going back to when I was a kid, I played football. I think you know, obviously, being in the UK, one of the main main sports over here is playing football. Mm. I didn't know what I wanted to be until I was thirteen, really, because I was still trying to become a professional football player. And when I jumped into hairdressing, it was by accident. I got a barbering kit from Remington because my mum couldn't afford me to go to the barbers anymore because I wanted to go every week. I literally started watching the video uh, that they came with the, and I got I got into it and fell into it. And my mum said, listen, you need to start earning money. Why don't you go and work in hairdressers? And I was like, I ain't gay. I ain't going to work in hairdressers. That's, that's gay. Got into it and loved it. And I, I really enjoyed working with my hands, the creativity. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to be a professional football player. I'm going to give this a good crack. And it was artistic, it was creative. And then, you know, I enjoyed, you know, cutting hair for my friends at school. So making money, charging them a fiver for a haircut. And I think that's <laughs> where, you know, I don't know about if you watch a lot of Gary V, Gary V from on YouTube yeah, and yeah. stuff, but I, I love Gary V. And um, his actual, <laughs> his actual really, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so Gary, I've only literally got into Gary V the last six months. And funnily enough, a lot of the stuff he talks about, I kind of almost clap because it's like, Jesus, it's like everything I've done in my life, Gary V's done. Obviously, yeah. it's like me being playing on the Sunday pitch compared to someone who's playing in the Premier League. But you understand the game, you understand what the format is. He just does it really, really well. But he sings to me all the time with what he says. And he's definitely helped me in the last six months with understanding micro, macro failure, all these kind of things in business. Uh, he's just put a lot of things in into perspective. And um, I think, like I said, you read in that book, it's it's an incredible, incredible thing to do, isn't it? To to do entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, and not everyone's geared up to do it. And I definitely think in my twenties, I wasn't geared up for it. I was doing it to become famous and to become popular, to show off in front of my mm -hmm. friends, to have the money, have the cars, have the lifestyle. Being a hairdresser gave me that, you know, being uh, a big fish in a small pond in the area I was working in. Everyone wanted the Johnny haircut. It was kind of like that was my thing back in the day. But now in my 40s, I almost feel like with, with all the Gary Vee stuff and stuff going around my life at the moment with this, with, since COVID, I feel like I've literally got to a point now where I can run a business because I'm not trying to become successful or famous because I actually just bloody love it. I actually yeah. love doing the stuff. And how do you feel about those kind of things about your business? Is that Because I, yeah. I don't see you the kind of guy who's built it to sell it. You look like the kind of guy who's built it to drive it. Yeah, I mean, so I, I've always, I, you know, like I said, when I kind of um, moved from running Spiritus, my bar company, to uh, Both Creative Seven and realised that I love business, I, I look back at my life and I've I realised that I've always kind of been a bit entrepreneurial. Um, you know, I started out with a, a tuck shop, uh, selling a few sweets, things like that. Then I moved into selling Pokemon cards when I was at school. Made <laughs> Made call a small you, uh, fortune there. Call you Logan, Logan Paul. <laughs> well, I, mate, I, I made I made a small fortune. I remember my mum coming in and I've got like hundreds on my bed as like you know a, a, a young kid, and um, and she's she's thinking that I've just like turned into a drug dealer or something. She's like, "Where's this money from?" <laughs> <That's not laughs> yeah. cards. Um, and we used to buy them from a shop that imported them from Japan, um, and. Yeah. Uh, then I'd, I'd kind of open them up. You were guaranteed a shiny, take them to school, sell that shiny for, uh, I think the most I ever got was 350 quid for a card back then. So um, No way, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So uh, I've always loved that business side of things. Um, in terms of like your love for it, yeah, like, I think people who love it tend to do better. Um, Poth Grade 7, uh, I was talking to someone recently about this. Poth Grade 7 for me isn't one of those businesses that I use to just generate cash. Both Great Seven is my baby, it's my child. You know, yeah. everything has to be done how it has to be done. Um, but I think anyone who runs their own business, you know, it, it's important not to paint an unclear picture of it. Like you will Definitely. have the highest highs that you have, yeah. but you will also have the lowest lows that you have. Um, yeah. And there's, there's been no in between where, them. Oh, uh, no. I mean, I, there's been times where I've just been so stressed and sad and felt alone running my own business yeah um, emotional yeah and especially with a team with you you can't you can't turn around and, and, and talk to them about your your work problems because they're your team you don't want to kind of you know 
show them the any any weakness or uh, uh, you know just, the, the guy running the business isn't hasn't got it all sorted. Uh, just jump. Can I just jump on that? You yeah. see how Gary V does his runs his business. Do you, mm. do you agree with that? With that kind of empathetic kind of openness and and and, and yeah, honesty uh, and that kind of stuff. Do you, you, do, do you think that's where? Do you think that's? Do you think that's changing in the workplace now? Where you I, I, as an yeah, as an owner I mean, now you could of, you could actually have that have that kind of you could you I, could have that honest conversation now. To some extent, yeah, I definitely think you can. But there's there's times where you you've got um you've got things going on and you don't want to stress other people out with something that you're dealing with. Yes, um, I know, especially when it's financial. Yeah, I mean we've we've had uh, we've had bits in the past where you kind of wake up and you think like this isn't where it should be or that's not how it's meant to be. Um, uh, we had um, we had an issue years ago, uh, and it was all to do with cash flow. You know, the, the business has always been strong. We've been profitable since day one, but Good we time. had a cash flow issue. I remember waking up and there being fifty p in the bank account and payroll, in the <laughs> yeah. way. and I'm thinking yeah. like, uh, like oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> How am I? Uh, how am I going to make payroll? You know, uh, first first challenge, isn't it? First yeah, challenge. It's like what, what? 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 I've not been in this situation before. What, yeah, I, what, I, what do I, I do? was What's... just kind of sat there for the first like ten minutes, just ready to break down. Um, but then you go in from there and you think, right, okay, I'm not going to resolve it. I'm going to um, deal with that. That's not the type of thing that I sit my team down and uh, and say, I've had a stressful morning. Let's have a chat. Um, but. So yeah, you might get paid, you might not get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah so <laughs> you know in, I mean? in that respect, I wouldn't really kind of share that. The, the empathy side of it, though, I think is huge. Um, yeah. uh, I've got a... Um, I, think the whole world's, I think the whole world's changing on that front, don't you? Uh, I yeah. think the whole world's changing towards empathy. You know, mental health in the last seven years has changed just well, astronomically, really, to be honest with you, I, I think, uh, for my own personal experiences. But... Yeah, go on, carry on, mate. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I think for me, like my my main rule, and uh, you ask a few members of my team, and uh, they'll be able to quote me on this. But um, you know, just when you're running things, just I, I try my best not to be a dick. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I know it, it, hard hard for me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate I, I failed it so many times. Yeah, I know. I do my yeah. best not to. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, that I think you've me, got you know, you've got you've got to have a level of treat others how you want to be treated, haven't you? Hundred percent. You know that calm and, on, and, on, and on, exactly, real. exactly. And on that point as well, the one thing I struggle with for me and my business the most is treating others how I want to be treated, but I find I don't get treated the same. I always get treated. I put so much effort into relationships, so much effort. I I'll go my I'll go extra mile for people, and that's where the Gary V things really helped me a lot because I used to have this real come down if if it wasn't both ways, and I'd always chase the employees that yeah I was trying to please and ignore the ones that was going the extra mile for me. And, and I, don't I learned think it very... needs to be both ways though. You know, like if, if you're putting it out, you're putting good out there. You know, sure. you're your deed is done if you're putting it out there and, and you chase that coming back I've, I've always found it to be such an energy drain you know you you're either going to get it back or you're yeah. not it's it, that, that i think that cup that comes with age sam i think that comes with age yeah. just understanding self-awareness again going back to the gary v this is going to be the gary v show tonight i've got to say <laughs> i'll, but, I'll, I'll, I'll a, get all his books out and then we but can uh... yeah. but what <laughs> i'm saying is it's self-awareness that i'm starting to realize <laughs> But what, what he said to me was, uh, what, what I was saying recently that's really helped me just break the link on that chain was give, 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 because it's good to give, because it makes you feel good without trying to get something back. And I think all I wanted back from people was, in the long run, was I invest, you invest, I invest, you invest. Not I didn't need anything substantially from you. I just wanted you to be on the same level as me, to want it as much as me. Does that make any sense? Yeah. And I think that was my biggest mistake in the early days of wanting someone to love my business how I loved it was my mistake. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I get you on that. I, I agree with you on that. Because I because I work for I've always worked for other people as if it was my own business. Yeah. And I was looking for those characters. But you're also now someone with your own business. You know, you were the type yeah. to create something. Um yeah. you know, I realize it's, it's time. I realise not everyone can run a business. 
Yeah, the people who want to put that love and energy into someone else's business will often realize that actually I can do this for myself. And I think that's why you're in the position of having your own business. Yeah. Um, uh, but, I mean, on the on the topic of authors, you've mentioned Gary V a few times. Cool. Have you read any of the uh, Simon Sinek stuff? Because a lot yeah, of what yeah, you're yeah. saying is yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. It's him not, all over. I, I, no, I've, read, I've, I've not read any books, but I've watched... Uh, uh, because of my years of mental health issues, I've watched and I've watched a lot of videos trying to fix myself. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I think you know, talking about the beard in 2013, I'm starting to realise I think I'm way ahead of everybody on this. So when I when Gary V does his stuff, he realises he's the only one in the room talking about it. I've been talking about this for a long time, and it wasn't popular. But now he's making it a thing. Now what I'm talking about is becoming reality. And it's like people never trusted me because when I said, I'll, listen, I'll help you. What do you need? I'll, I'll do it for you. You know, they're always expectation. I think it's a British culture's expectation. By the way. We have to sort of factor in British culture is um, we hate people doing things for us. Hate it. We, don't, we, we, you know, we want to learn by ourselves. We don't want to be told what to do. I mean, COVID was the great, greatest um asset to watch how the uk actually deals with being told what to do yeah it was like <laughs> do do this and you'll be safe no fuck that um uh, you're gonna tell me what to do you can jog on mate i'm gonna just because you told me that i'm gonna do that <laughs> do you know what i mean like oh, it was fascinating it was fast well, it's fascinating from a, from a from a psychological cultural point of view we we don't and I, by the way that's that's not a negative that's an asset because we always questioned right from wrong to find out the answer whether it's right or wrong to do it we investigate the facts we then have debate and then we grow off the back of the the, the thing and i think that's a a british culture thing is why we've been at the leading center of hairdressing for donkey's years now and also technological advances you know all mm. the things we've all the invent you know look at dyson you know all the all the all the people that have invented stuff, Richard Branson, sort of, we've been at the forefront of it. If that, does that make any sense? So it's, it's as much as we yeah. we don't just go okay, we'll listen. Um, we do also question it, rebuild it, break it down, and, and figure it out. And I think that's the hard part about being self aware yeah, sometimes. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily put that down to be a British thing, but I think there's definitely a culture um, that is appearing of those those people willing to. To question, step forward, um, and you yeah. know I've I've seen it in different areas. I know um, you know the UK's obviously uh, it leads in many industries. Um, you yeah. know London's known for uh, for a huge amount of stuff, um, but I do see these pockets everywhere. And there's a certain uh, way of thinking now that I think is growing, and and a lot of it is down to social media. Um, yes, those thought leaders. Like Gary V, Simon Sinek, yeah. um, and all these these great minds that um, uh, that you love, I love, and, and you, you get to hear them and, and listen to them and see them that you didn't have, you know, twenty years ago. They get shouted down. I think that's yeah. just, you've only got to watch football and see how they shake hands in the tunnel, have a cuddle, grope each other a little bit, and then go and kick each other's ass on the football pitch. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not they're, they're not the Roy Keens and the Gerrards and the Lampards and the Terrys and the you know England games where they'd fight and they'd fight at their club fight fight at England. There's an ability yeah. now, like Gary says, is to I want to beat the shit out of you on the football pitch, and I'm going to have a beer with you after, you know, yeah. and shake your hand. And I think I think that's where business is still way behind. And yeah, I think that's you, where we struggle. Does that make sense? Because we I still we, we, we get it per, we get it personal when it comes to our money. It becomes very personal. Don't yeah, you think? I, I, I see it a huge amount in um, uh, you know I, I say our industries. I'm kind of not talking so much about the detail inside because I don't know that. Yeah, but, no, for hundred percent. I think uh, I think in, it's, in, I think it's universal. Yeah, in the um, in the barbering industry particularly, like uh, that, uh, you know. Sorry for that's got mass, the, the that's terrible massive. pun, but that's yeah. that's cutthroat. I see so many people who yeah. kind of they don't like that shop, you know, that one shop they don't like it, the one down the road. Um, that's, that's, uh, a, that's, a, that's a male thing as well, yeah. And um, you know, in my industry, there's uh, there's there's a few brands um, that are 
strong competition for us. And I absolutely love seeing the guys that run it. Um, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll go for a drink, we'll have a chat. Whenever we're at events, we always meet up. Um, mm -hmm. We go say hi to each other uh, and have a good laugh. And then there's the other half where they're like, we don't want anything to do with you. Um, and there's, there's a, a really yeah. strong, you know, business is like that. And it's hard because a lot of people do take it personally. You know, you get caught up in this little bubble. Um, yeah. You look at what you're doing. You, you believe what you're doing is the best. And, um, and then anyone else doing it, they're doing it wrong. Um, what you're what you're talking about, <laughs> Sam? What what you're what you're talking? Sorry, but I just jump in. Yeah. What you're talking about for any of the detailers that are watching this are going to be watching this afterwards is they feel so isolated in their industry that they feel like it's a detailing issue. So yeah. everything you just everything you've just described right there, detailers, ninety eight percent males, um, and I've been in a female industry that's hairdressing, and I've been in a male industry that's that's obviously predominantly male uh, for detailing. What you're just discussing is very much across probably multi industries and not yeah. just specific to one industry. And I think with business, we forget how universal it is and we kind of think about those kind of issues. But going on to what you're saying, mate, about empathy, go on, carry on. Yeah, I mean, just for me, it, it's it's kind of approaching it like you've got to have that empathy and realize, you know, there's uh, there's two views for everything. You know, if you think you're, what you're doing is best, someone else will think it's not the best. It's that mm -hmm. simple. Um, and if do you, do you find that just quick? Do you find that with um, look at Messi and Ronaldo playing football? They don't really worry about the rest because they're so in their own lane. They don't really feel the competition. They they use each other to drive each other forwards. Do you find that because you're so in your own lane with Apothecary eighty seven that you're ap you're happy to be? can't be in conversation with other people because it doesn't really threaten what you're actually doing. But you know, like with football teams that are in a regular relegation fight, they start fighting amongst each other. They start arguing with each other. You know, they stop, they get lost in the process. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I do. Yeah, and I've, I've kind of got a, a, a scenario where it happens. Um, cool. um, we, when we first launched, uh, we launched a, a beard oil and we fragranced it with vanilla and mango. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, awesome. At the time, nobody did anything like that. It was always like your, your stereotypical masculine smells like wood, leather, um, yeah, made vanilla, lemon in it. Um, yeah. And we, we were like, you know, what, let's do let's do a proper curveball. And we launched this vanilla and mango, and we we blew up with it. Like literally, it's gone to 135 different countries. Um, Amazing. Still our top seller. I think it's about eight years on since we've launched that. Um, yeah, like, people love it, uh, and. I had, God, probably about seven or eight different companies pop up, uh, and I saw they released vanilla or mango as a fragrance. Now, <laughs> it's a compliment, man. Yeah, Massive compliment. I spent a long time being pissed off at it, and I was like, I can understand these, why. I can these, understand. You know, why. We came up with this curveball. We came up with this creative idea. Yeah, um, so proud of it. And these people just want to copy us. They don't. They don't have their creativity. They don't. Um, you know. Uh, believe in what they've done. They're just doing it because they're hopping on a trend. Um, we had the same thing when we launched that uh, the uh, the club, the the man club baseball bat that we launched. Cool I've seen about three other companies who've now got baseball bats as logo. Um, but yeah, I spent a long time being pissed off and, and frustrated. But you've led the way, though, haven't you? Yeah, I that's realized the, that's that the being thing. Pissed off, I was just wasting my time. I, yeah, you do, I'm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wasting my time. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, stripping my body of all the, the positive serotonin uh, chemicals that get released when you think positively. Um, yeah. And uh, and I'm, I'm becoming a, <laughs> I'm becoming a grumpy gus and uh, and wasting my time on things that I'm not going to yeah. go. I'm not going to be able to change that. I'm not going to turn up at this company and say, "Hey, stop copying," and then they're like, "Yes, yeah, sound." <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. so um, yeah, I just, I just kind of let it be and, and do my own thing. And I look at other companies, um, and I, I see the bits of what they've done, and think, you know what, that they've done that well, they've done that so well. You, you know, I, for it. you can tell, you, you can, you can smell it, can't you? You can tell. Oh yeah, yeah. And the companies big it. and small in in our industry that I kind of see, and I think, I love what you're doing, and. Uh, I think if you can look at other companies in your industry and think, I love what they're doing, big and small, that's such a positive thing. 
Uh, and if you can not waste your time being pissed off, <laughs> it's such a positive thing. It takes a long time, though, Sam. It takes a long time. Look, you know, it takes a long time to become weathered in this mindset because you have to go. You can't rush the process. And you talk yeah. about entrepreneurism as a, as a process on how you deal with highs and lows, how you deal with your emotions, how you stay calm, how you get fired up, um, and how you keep trying to reinvent yourself is the game. You know, re remember for us as hairdressers, we're sat there, mate, in a hair salon, all fighting for the one person to come through the door, and yeah. we're all competing against each other, and we're supposed to be a team. Yeah. What 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 a cocktail of emotions that you're trying to beat everybody else you work with, but you're trying to provide for everybody else that you work for. It's it's mental, and there's so many valuable lessons in that. It's unbelievable, and um, obviously you don't have any uh, ideas about the detailing industry f per se, but you obviously and you're doing the barbering industry, and barbering's come on just hum in the last eight years. Barbering's gone bananas. I mean, you know. I didn't realise I'm at, I'm at the risk at the moment with my hairdressing business of becoming out of fashion because of the fact that um, hairdressing perspectives, the fashion's so poor now that I know a lot of the hairdressers are moving into barbering because as a, as a stylist that didn't learn how to colour hair, it was specifically predominantly I was doing women and men's hair and the fashion for women's hair now has gone so so simple so classic and so color orientated yeah that side of my business is really struggling because i'm a specialized cutter see and that in the men's industry is now for the barbering you now see people like josh lamonica uh, baldy cool. all these kind of guys are doing absolutely they're doing numbers when yeah. it comes to you what know, they're doing talking of um uh you know jumping back a sec to to Go on. People, Go on. you know appreciating other businesses josh lamonica and men's i mean they're they're not um if i had that company i'd be doing you know presenting it a different way but they are uh, absolutely killing it in in their field yeah. you know yeah. and um and good looking and, bastard as well you know you I, he's a good looking bastard as well and <laughs> you know and, and, but, but you know but i'm not you know but he's got it all what i'm saying he's got the whole package he yeah, talks but, well he talks well everything is and he look he looks the part as well and in the fashion so industry you've got to look the part mate yeah, you know if you know what he does well, right? it's skill stacking, and um, I think uh, Gary might have spoken about it a couple of times. But um, if you can skill stack in a way that no one else can skill stack, um, that's that's huge. You know, being able to take. Uh, I don't think you have to be the best at any one particular thing. No, I think you can. You can be. Uh, you know, the the best barber, the best detailer, the best. Yeah, you that's know, it. Whatever. Yeah, but you might be you know the worst when it comes to uh marketing or social media business. <laughs> and yeah business and, uh, yeah. and nobody nobody will ever find out about you yeah, um, exactly but all of a sudden you know you you become um and and for me when i look at people like josh monica in the barbering industry he's a great barber uh is he the best you know that's that's down to whether you've it's preference. seen who's the best. That's a preference. When you get to that, it's yeah. like who can sing better. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You, it's it's, it's he, it just it's just it's just horses for yeah. courses. He's um, great at present or building a brand. Um, you look at what he's yeah. done with his, his company, and people yeah. see it, and they instantly know whether it's for them or not. He's yeah. great at communicating. He's great at social media. He's great at um, education, and his business. He's used all of those. He's not the best at any of those, uh, or, or he might not be the best. Again, it, it's it's down to perception. I got what you um, mean. I get what you're trying to say. He's put all of those together and created a package of yeah. what the the some that no one else has got that that skill stack that package. Um, and I, I think if you can skill when stack you that, when you when you stack them all up together, yeah, you end you end up being a head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd. And 100%, I think, yeah, I think that's the thing we're discussing as well is seeing a, a gap. In a saturated industry, um, yep. barbering obviously isn't a saturated industry. Barbering back in the day was seen as the cheap old man's haircut. It's not yep. that anymore. Barbering prices are catching me up like you would not believe, which <laughs> helps me, which helps me a lot um, in so many ways. But there's and there's a difference in service and, and all that sort of stuff. But going back to the business side of it, it's predominantly looking specifically at 
a certain business and what it's lacking and able to skill stack in a way that you offer the whole complete service, the whole complete package. I suppose yeah, in I, a way... You know, I think the people cool. who really excel, they will skill stack in a way that no one else does. Yes. You know, no one else yeah. really skill stacks the way that uh, uh, Josh does. Or if you take Gary V, you know, again, um, nobody skill stacks like he does. Um, I think the the only person kind of on, on Gary V's skills, similar skill stack, I'd say, is uh, Steve Bartley, if you've heard of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he's, 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 done, he's done so well for himself. Um, but he's got a similar skill stack, but a different country. But, um, you know, the, once you start kind of creating an individual skill stack, you know, you might you might be great at detailing, but if you can do um, social media like no one else can, if you can present and talk and, and you create um, all these different little bits and put it together, your own little puzzle, um, yeah, that's when I, things just take off. I think, it's, you know, another industry, it's all about, it's probably Gymshark, brand Gymshark yeah. as well. Yeah, what they're doing in that in that in that industry, and I think this is something that we're talking about a lot. Even the fact we're swapping industries and having a look, we're just discussing certain entrepreneurs we're thinking about. We we we're driving in our own lane, but we're looking out the window at the, at the view left and right and seeing what other industries are doing. What are they doing? You know, I I think my life has been I've been worked at a butcher's, I worked at a wedding center, managing a wedding center, went into yeah. hairdressing, detailing. Um, loads I'm of different loads, loads of different things. I definitely think that the wedding center stuff gave me the skill set to how to sell. Selling, 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 selling. Day in, day out, that's all I did was sales. You know, hairdressing was what it was. You know, loads of different things I think have pulled me together to become the all rounder. That skill stacking you're talking about for me was talking to people in hairdressing, then having to communicate and doing the podcasting now. It's easy for me because I've been doing it. I'm basically just cutting your hair right now, having a chat. That's it. This yeah. is literally, that's the skill stack. People are going to be, how did you become so good at this? Well, first of all, two years ago, I used to try my best to do, I saw video becoming so popular for marketing and um, I struggled to put the video on because I was always a photos guy, Facebook, photo, blah, 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 blah. And I was doing that way before anyone else. All my salon guys used to take the piss out of people post on Facebook, used to take the p- absolute absolute piss. And I, because I love what I did, I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't wait to, I wanted to be Anthony Muscola, do you know what I mean? So I wanted to post pictures like Anthony would in a magazine, but on my page and, yeah. and I was way ahead. And it's funny, once you hit your, I hit my ceiling with not being able to do stage stuff. I, my nerves were too much. It was, it was nerve wracking. I had the shakes. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do this. And I just didn't have the, the mobility to do it. But during lockdown, did a different industry. Nobody knew me. Nobody had any expectations of me. I managed to free up my mind, free up my speech and talking. And it's amazing what actually in modern business now, with how I've done that process, how that really does catapult and add value to your brand. And what Gary says about, you know, five posts a day, this, 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 and this, getting in front of the camera. There are other ways of doing your brand and you don't have to be, you know, we don't know, you know, the people at McDonald's don't have to do not do the adverts. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, well, Ronald does every now and again, but <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. But we're in an era now for social media where it's it's literally, you you are running my your business from your phone. I've got five, five Instagram accounts that I'm running of all businesses and it's all from my phone. I don't have to go to a place of work. You know, there's it's opportunity knocks everywhere, isn't it, at the moment? And we're still having to catch up emotionally with the emotional intelligence, how we manage ourselves with being plugged in 24-7, oh. unlike our parents were going to work, <laughs> shut the shop, and Saturday, Sunday, there was, everything was closed, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mate, this, this, is, this is a conversation in itself. Um, yeah, massively. It, <laughs> you, you've, you've hit the nail on the head with, uh, with many parts of it. Um, you know, social media is huge. It's impacting everyone. It changes, um, you know, behaviors and psychological patterns now. Um, totally changed. Uh, we've we've got people who, are, obviously, with the brand, we're really heavy on marketing. Um, the the marketing courses that you can get out there, all the like the MVQs. I was um, I was asked to be on the uh, the panel to help um, shape the uh, digital marketing course for MVQs in the UK, and. Um, 
when we were working on that, one of the, the big issues that I was talking about was by the time this course is out, it's going to be wrong. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's, do you know what? I didn't think about it like that. It's, you've absolutely nutted it. Yeah. You've I mean, nutted it. Think think about Facebook, right? When when did Facebook come out? Like 2005? 2007. 2007, right? So... <laughs> oh, my daughter was born. It's mad, isn't it? Mate, it, it, like, that, at that point, it, you know, 2006, it doesn't exist. Uh, 2007, it's here. You can you can write on someone's wall and and, uh, and share a photo. Then all of a sudden, you know, we, we've got videos and podcasts and things like that. Then social media starts to kind of impact uh, how people behave uh, and their ability to socialize. Um, yep. Then, you know, Meta comes out and now we're looking at a world AI. where, you know, people might literally just be plugging into the matrix or they might be putting their, their headsets on and, and changing it. Amazing for business. Get on it. Do what you can. But at the same time, just be super aware of... Um, uh, of your own health and um, your, your but, mental but, but, but business has taken over social media. Yeah. So back in the day, you said about said about Facebook. Everyone was po remember when Facebook first came out, and there was this some woman you knew that you didn't that you probably went out and had a load of fun with uh, back in the day. But like you now saw her going, just about to put the washing on, just about to go <laughs> into the garden, just about to make a cup of tea. That was the stories. You like. Fuck off! Stop! It's, what are you on about? Stop writing about that. We don't want to know about it. It's not exciting enough, right? It's yeah. not exciting enough. And then forward that twenty, forward that to twenty twenty two. Everything you see on Instagram now is an ad between stories. Everything you see is an advert somewhere. Facebook ads, Facebook marketing, Facebook this, TikTok influencers, brands getting paid for this, getting paid for that. I think people don't understand that, you know, how far businesses come. In that such small amount, short amount of time, and do you, do you know what interests me though about it? With Go with um with I, I agree, business is, is is changing rapidly. But the one thing that I I find really interesting is people don't engage. If you put up a super polished advert, people don't tend to engage with that anymore. I they, know why. Want, I know why. They Go want on. entertainment, and they want I know why humanity. Can I tell you, can I can I tell you this because it's so super excited to tell you about this. I sound like Gary now. Um, 2007, when Facebook launched, they uh, they did a study, and I, I don't know where I saw this on you because literally all I do is watch YouTube now. Literally, that's it. <laughs> I I've learned so much in the last two years just from watching YouTube. It seems like if I'm not watching YouTube, I'm not learning every day, and I love learning every day. Do you know what I mean? So I love that yeah. YouTube is insane. Um, so Facebook because I in my in my journey with detailing. I did a lot of stuff in the early days about mental health and I was trying to, you know, my, my catchphrase is oi oi and it's all about mental health and well-being and men talking up about problems because I've done this in my hairdressing for so long and detailers don't talk about their, their mental health. They don't want to open up to these things. And there's a couple of characters in the industry, which I won't mention any names because it just gives them the clout, but they were always being super aggressive, super controversial and saying everything that – and I, I used to get me really, you know – up against them, do you know what I mean? And yeah. and now, I, and now it just goes over my head. But Facebook did a a, a thing because what we don't realise about agendas is really simple: Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. They all want you to and TikTok. They all want you to stay on the app. Yeah. And what Facebook knew a long time ago before these apps came out was very simple: when they noticed the algorithm starting to form, was when people had conflict and arguments. It would mean that they would spend longer on the app debating a problem or an issue or an argument and if you wrote something where you went i've just had a baby like scroll <laughs> yeah right yeah. not well done see you later like well done that's it i i don't like red shoes well i fucking like bloody green shoes you twat you know and like you're on the phone literally going i've got to be on here until i prove my point and all they're doing at, at facebook hq are going <laughs> look at all these lot arguing amongst themselves while you're just staying on the app and it's i don't it's not right it's not wrong it's just a gem i think it's the, what, what, what i know what about to say it to. is they really will reward um what they class as engaging content um so get, you know like having to having to monitor it more now aren't they having yeah to monitor it a lot more now that they're <laughs> yeah, getting definitely. really they're getting really, you know, YouTube yeah. now, like, um, 
the, the podcast uh, Full Send, which is the Nelk Boys on YouTube. I've just literally stumbled across them, by the way. Did the first interview with Trump since he's out of uh, thing. And because they interviewed him, because Trump's been banned from all social media sites, it had 5 million views in 24 hours and it got taken down. You're wow. not allowed to mention YouTube now. You're not allowed to mention anything about COVID on YouTube. So I won't say it out loud. But anything like Joe Rogan stuff. So it's fascinating, isn't it, that the freedom of speech kind of scenario, we're going off, off topic here, way off topic, but it's, it's to do with social media. But it's one of those things where the, it's becoming squashed, restricted, you know, about what you can say, what you can do, what you can't do. Lots of words are being flagged up now because so many people were moaning that, about abuse, uh, my, myself, myself as well, and now it's like you can't even have an opinion without it being flagged. And I think from a business perspective, it's it's possibly a good thing because of the the less noise that goes on. But I think, like you said, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you're, you're, you're posting up a post about your business, hoping it does really, really well. And if it doesn't hit the mark on a slightly controversial tagline like adverts have done for a long time and trigger you you've either got to trigger someone in a business advert by something that's really funny or you've got to trigger them in a way that it's controversial and it depends on what way you feel morally correct to create your revenue do you know what i mean i mean that you've you've just described marmite you know um <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's, sorry mate it's, it's, it's fine and, and you know what it's taking it back back into business like it's marmite is the the best business model out there in terms of marketing it's true, you know, it's true is it they, it's, true. They, it's that polarizing you either you either make it you know funny or argumentative like you're saying you know it's marmite you either love it or you hate it um and and uh, i know you mentioned um like Trump, he did the same. He polarized people. Either loved him or they hated him. Uh, whichever way you uh, you lean towards, I know um, loads of people that love him, loads of people that hate him. Is that um, clever? But- then do you think that's clever? Then do you think that's clever to think? Do you know what? Half the population are going to hate me, but the other half are going to love me. And if the other half love me, that's going to outweigh the people that don't 100%. really don't 100%. really vote. I, when that, it comes that, that to don't have it. that don't care either way. The, the when it comes to marketing, the most dangerous place to be is between those two. If you're in that middle ground and you're uh, um, you're not loved and you're not hated, you're just there. I, you know, you, you never do anything to step outside of that. The moment you do something and create something that you you think people will love, other people will hate it. You know, it takes it back to that chat about empathy we had. There's two sides, yeah. two views yeah. to every coin. Um, you know, if you can, if you make something. Someone will love it, someone will hate it, and that's okay. Uh, it's okay to not be liked. It's okay to not do something. Um, again, you know, taking it back to what we were chatting about earlier, I still have that uh, that that motto of "damn your dick." <laughs> um, no, no, exactly. It, it has to be something that yeah. you that falls within your guidelines of how yeah. you want to how we, you f- can sleep at night. It's about how, you, how can you sleep yeah. at night. We launched a product a few years ago. We did a limited edition um, hairstyling product and we fragranced it with gunpowder. It smelled like if you've ever been to a bonfire and then you you come home and you smell your clothes the next day, that's what it smelled like. Right? And you might be thinking like that's that sounds appalling. That's like why would I want my hair <laughs> like that? But you know what? We killed it. We either got one star reviews or five star reviews, nothing in the middle and um so that's 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 awesome so you know yeah. this is a this is a great conversation mate because i i i've realized i've stopped triggering people because what i was talking about in detailing is starting to become the norm and it's not triggering and it was it was all with love um but it's become the norm so if we if if we've just figured out some marketing things and ideas what do you do is for apothecary 87 to to continue to push the one stars and five star reviews in your business? I mean, we aim for the five stars. Um, always, always though. <laughs> I mean, but, no, but you know what I'm trying to say, but you know, yeah. you know, the five stars, you're going to get a one star. Like I said to you the other day, I read your, some of the reviews on, on, on the website and it was like, people were talking about vanilla and uh, the original. Yeah. And I was like, I, you I'm must okay be off your, I was, well. I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a fight with them. I was like, 
how how very dare you? Yeah. How this very my, dare you? My initial you? reaction, I, I get that kind of little bit hurt about it. But you know what? On on a grand scale, yeah. I accept them. If you if you yeah, if you that. read it and I love that. If you if you read any reviews that we've had that are low ratings, it will be because of someone's preference over a fragrance, usually. Yeah. Um or, or, you, or you've nailed it. You know, so so for us, I know that you know. Fifty-one percent of the people that we we make this for are actually going to love it, even if it's less. If it's five percent yeah. of people love it and ninety-five percent of people hate it, those five percent who love it are just going to go all in on it. Um, you've, and you've, hit, you, you've hit a nail on the head for where where I'm at at the moment with my business. You've hit yeah. the nail on the head because I get super defensive with other people criticizing. Um, my mates' channels or comments on the channel. I'll, yeah. I'll go out and defend them. Or if someone gets, you know, I've been very quick in my industry to be very defensive about people who are being horrible to other people. I, I, it doesn't sit well with me. I don't like it. But I mm. suppose in a way, I, I'm still struggling with not being liked in some sort of way or form. And I'm trying to create, I, I'd, like, I'd rather be really good at something and get and trigger them that way than trigger them for being a dick, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I think yeah. you're right. I, I don't think I looked at it from a from a standoff perspective, yeah. where I was thinking business enough to think, how's this? How's this gonna? How, how look at it from a, from an objective rather than a, an emotional yeah. standpoint? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I I kind of learned it when I was uh, very early in the bar trade. You know, we got quite big into mixology and uh, you know doing creative things, and then yeah. I remember uh, I created a, um, uh, I infused bacon into uh, a bourbon, like an American whiskey. And um, people would come into the bar and they'd, 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 they'd yeah, they'd, they'd want a shot. And I, and they'd I can smell, I can actually smell and taste that as you say that. It, it works. I so like well. that. I loved it. Um, and they, you know, they'd come in and say, you know, what can I have? And, you know, what, I want a shot, what can I have? And I recommend this bacon flavored bourbon that we'd made. And, um, and they're like, the first question guaranteed was always, will I like it? And uh, I remember my, my response because I got so used to answering this question was, uh, you know, it's 50 50. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. But either yeah. way, you're going to remember this bar. And every yeah, time they that. bought it, and, and it was, and, and they come back. And I, I got a lot of work um, uh, moving on from that. You know, it's helped me kind of go into the, the consultancy side. I got a lot of work from um, people coming in, and bars would travel. We used to have bars, and um, because I, I, we were in Doncaster at that point, and um, we used to have um, other bars putting their team onto minibuses and sending them, uh, you know, from Leeds or Manchester or wherever mm. to come to our bar um, because the, the word spread, and, um, and you know, it's that whole polarizing thing of you know love and hate. You know, don't stand in the middle and you do great things. Yeah, I'm sure there were plenty of people who tried it and thought that's disgusting. I'm off. <laughs> I'm never coming back to this bar again. But then they went away and they told their friends, their friends was, how's your night? And they're like, oh, I went to this bar. They served me this horrible bacon flavored bourbon. Like, and that person's thinking, I don't know if I'm going to like that, but I really want to try what they tried. <laughs> Heston Blumenthal made a really big business. He's literally two miles from us. You know, the fat duck in yeah. Bray here about making, you know, um, <laughs> all sorts of crazy, crazy recipes that has become that got him to be the biggest yeah. restaurant and won that award for the best restaurant in the world. So, yeah, I agree with you, and I, I I've learned a lot from this chat tonight, mate, because it's it's uh, yeah. you've you've filled in a lot of little gaps that I'm <laughs> that I knew that, that I, well that I knew that were there. It 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 was more reassurances than anything that I didn't already know. Does that make any sense? I yeah, think, like I... I love chatting to business people because you almost uh, brainstorm with each other. You know, yeah, there's probably the so... I've, be lonely if you want to be. Yeah, listen, I think, you know, I think it is. And I'm more in a place now where I want to, I want to win on my own merit. I, I'd rather, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big affirmator when it comes to business. I'm quite happy telling everyone my secrets. Yeah. And hope, hoping it comes to fruition rather than, yeah. and if they do it better than me, then they should, they deserve it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Better, you know, like what you said a minute yeah. ago about that going through that process of people copycatting some ideas. Yeah, the best the best form of flattery is imitation. 
And the fact is, if you're always creating, they're always going to be one step behind. They're going to be following. Yeah, you know? that's it. That's, that's, that's how it always works. You can't, you know, you talk about Josh DeMonica, stuff he's doing with his business is innovative and it's, it's, he's, he's carving out something with his business. And I think, like I said, you know, having said that, you know, with Apothecary, what is the, what is the movement now with the, with the, with the brand? What's, what's, what's the expansion? What's, is it, is it about maintaining the brand now? Is there, is there, what's coming forward no, for, for think, you right now? I think we're, we're going to continue to grow. I mean, so obviously, you know, I, I told you that we, you know, right at the start of the chat when, when we set up and it became an idea um, up to the point that, you know, my, starting to make it a company um didn't expect it to be anything uh i borrowed a couple grand off my dad um Mm -hmm. and set it up and then before i knew it the company grew uh i think our our first month just to give a quick recap our first month we did 300 quid turnover the second month we did 600 and the third month um we ended up doing 9,990 quid turnover Mm -hmm. um and we did a 370 grand turnover in our, our first year so we grew really quick by doing um that is quick uh, that's very that's really quick over a quarter of a million for the first year is exceptional yeah we um we you know especially when on a 1500 quid startup um <laughs> yeah so uh, that's so that's we, by the way guys that's before kickstarter yeah that was uh that do you know what i'm trying to say that's when that's that's when you used to be able to when you had to raise capital on your own yeah. And start your own business without having a Kickstarter or or investors or these kind of things. It was like, Dad, can I have my inheritance, please, to start a business because I'm a mad <laughs> bastard and I think it might work because everyone yeah. told me it'll work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we we even then he turned around to me and said, you know, uh, what are you going to do if this becomes, uh, you know, a full time business? And I was like, Nah, that's not going to happen. I'm just going to wing it. Um, <laughs> And then, like I say, within three months, it's kind of like, right, well, it's paying my wage and then some. Um, so, yeah, it grew really quick. I've I've never been one to kind of really set too many hard goals on on growth plans um, because I found that you can either achieve them really yeah, quickly I, yeah, I know. I or know. really slowly. I'm, I've completely swapped from – I've completely swapped personally from my 20s where I had this idea of wife, house, kids – three bedroom house you know two bmws on a driveway nothing too crazy but that was my thing and i i've only literally managed to achieve that now yeah and that was in my 20s i set that goal out so, you know what I mean? and i was in i was chasing so hard to get there it nearly it, well mentally it made me ill yeah. so i now i'd literally now with what i'm doing in my life because of the the way it unfolded badly i literally now it's come to me without when I wasn't looking at it. So when I wake up in the morning yeah. now, it's literally I just wake up and do what I've got in front of me because I don't really think too far ahead now because I'm happy with what I've got, but I'm not actually looking for the success is being happy, not the success of infinity of numbers, if that makes any sense. To oh, me. man. I mean, yeah, I, I, it, it's a hard one, though, because I don't think um, success is directly linked to happiness. It doesn't scale the same, does it? No. I've um so I I talk to I, this my, I talk to people to I men, I, who I mentor all the time and I say if your happiness isn't scaling up the same as your business then you need to question what you're actually trying to do. I see. I I I don't agree with that. I I think sure. that um, when you know I I was happy when uh you know I I didn't run a business. I you know I think yeah. I think each person. <laughs> Not not overall. I'm happy now. I run a business as well, but I think each person that has uh, it's like it's a the sadistic scale. part of you. It's the sadistic part of you that loves the pain. <laughs> 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 Wrong boy. Yeah. No, I think each person has like a happiness scale. So that you know, it's yeah, not definitely. to 100 on on the happiness scale, and yeah. you can you can hit 100 without running a business or without having um, you know that BMW on the drive or uh, you know that uh, the the family, the house, the the car, the uh, you know the Rolex, whatever you want, you can have, you know, seventy five, eighty, even a hundred happiness without yeah. those. Things. But yeah. then you can do those things as well, and you can achieve those that that happiness. You know, you, you you're no more happy than well when, when you've got happy. no money, you're not that happy, are you? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and going back to what I said earlier, you know, you, you get the highest highs and the lowest lows. I don't think yeah. it, um, it magnifies the happiness, but I think you can spend more time at a happy level, potentially, if that's what you enjoy. Um, I think people who don't do what they love doing are unhappy. I think those people who go to work to um, live for the weekend that for me blows my mind i i i can't oh, i know i know i just do it does listen i'm all for it i'm all for people that are employed and live for the weekend and can't wait for friday in the old status can't wait for <laughs> friday night can't wait for saturday night can't wait to go on a league count down to holiday i i do believe that it goes back to our parents where when they had us it was all about their grandparents and what they passed on it was all about saving the money so mm. that you could be free when you were retired. So work was a, was not a hobby. It was a job. You went to work. You were miserable. You did well. You went to work. You provided. You grafted. You you ripped yourself a new one. And then you got the chance when you hit a certain age to retire and do what you liked. I think that, you know, where we've learned from our grandparents is, was they were miserable. Miserable. You know, miserable together. <laughs> My grandparents were miserable together. You know, so you see more people splitting up now because they're not they're not happy. So they're not happy, so they move on and they, they live probably three lifetimes with different people or more kids with different people or living moving their girlfriends. And I think we I think inadvertently we don't realise that everyone does chase happiness now. Everyone are, is everyone's real attention is on happiness because they don't want to be in a relationship for too long if it's not working. So they go, right, this isn't working, I want to move on. Um, you know, I don't want to work in this company because I'm not happy anymore. I need to move on. I need to move forward. So I think we all, the subcontext is, I think we all are chasing happiness. We just don't realize that it's our focus. But when you're self-employed and you yeah. do what you love, you're actually retired early. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that's um, that that part's very true. You know, you do what you love, happy days, and you've you've got to you've got to make sure that you continue to do that. You know. I, I have times where I'm, I'm not happy at work. I can't stand sending emails. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I hate sending I love You know, the happiest I've been with Apothecary 7 recently was when, when I got to kind of uh, come up with the design concepts and implement the, the new shop design because it was creating yeah. and it was, it was like taking that vision outside my head and, and um, using that creative part. Uh, and and I, I love that. And then, you know, once that was launched, you know, the the following week was, uh, yeah. it was almost a downer because it, the, that was done. I was like, right, get me, get me another space. I want to build another one. <laughs> you know? Do you know um, what? It's, 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 you have, it, that's something that's cured my mental health a lot in the last two years, funnily enough, that what you've just touched on. And I watched something with Mike Tyson the other day that I loved on Joe Rogan. And I took it and I, and I repeat it a lot to people that I mentor at the moment. And I say it to the missus quite a lot. And it's become really good at stuff you don't love. Hmm. You know, that, yeah. uh, and Joe's like, what? And it was like, become really good at the things you don't like to do. And it's true, actually. A lot of us tend to shy away from the hard things we want to do because we so want to do the, the best things. And I think sometimes when you do the hard things you don't want to do and achieve something, that's when you get your greatest reward, not from doing the things you love to do all the time because actually it's too easy. Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely... In, in, a, you, in a way, does that make sense? I think if you, if I did the bits that I loved every day, it would... It'd be boring. I, I would lose out <laughs> on on the, that, you know, that scalable happiness that we spoke about. It's, the, it's, it's you know, about growth. I, it's about growth. I don't know what 100 happiness is like on the happiness scale unless I've experienced zero. You know? Yeah, exactly. That, it, no, it's, it's, it, that's exactly it. And where I try and where I try and manage myself in my business, my mental health, my business and my mental health are very linked because they affect each other on so, so many levels. And I think one thing I do now is I don't make decisions when I'm emotional. I stay away, again, go back to self-awareness. Yeah. I don't make decisions when I'm emotional. I don't make decisions when I've had a bad day. I feel like I've just got to get through that day and yeah. try and get something out of it. And what did I learn at the end of the day? It feels like, you know, toothache don't feel nice. <laughs> Being sick don't feel nice it feels better once it's over and it's kind of like one of those situations where you just have to go through. You just don't make, don't make decisions on impulse in those situations. But when you're firing and you're buzzing, that's when you can 
start clicking and start and start running. And I think I think actually I enjoy you know where I used to hate the highs and lows and try and be consistent. I realised that it's in, it's in, inachievable to be consistent all the time is inachievable. And I think as, as a creative person, as an entrepreneur, you have to be right. What we're doing, what we you know we're firing up. You know, listen listening to your theme tune to Apothecary Carry eighty seven before this went live. I went from like. I come home from come home from doing what I was doing this afternoon with some bits and pieces of meetings with uh, some some stickers and stuff, and I was a bit like, meh, meh, you know, like got a live to do tonight, meh, meh, you know, like, and then that that music kicked in. I was like, let's have it, <laughs> let's go, you know. And I think it, it's it's those things, isn't it? Like you said, and I try and when I when I teach people or coach people, it's like just try and be patient. You never know when the day's going to turn. You just don't know. Do you know what I mean? You wake up, you're late for work and the dog's bloody sick everywhere and stuff goes off. Da, 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 da. And then some somebody phones you up and something happens and all of a sudden you're like, now it's now it's tight. It's momentum. Football players live off momentum. You see them go 2 0 down and all of a sudden they're now 2 0 down. They want to play. They didn't go out yeah. to play. They they went out to not lose. And it's that defensive mindset sometimes that can be really difficult in business when you when you're worried about what you might lose rather than what you might gain. And once you're mm. on that, once you're on that turn, like you said with the business when you first kicked off for Apothecary eighty seven in, in twenty thirteen, it was like it was just like this, you know, and you just got on it and you just rode that horse. Here's here's a question for you. Um, Go on. I'm, I'm interviewing you now. Um, <laughs> um Crack on. now you're running your podcasts and you're doing your mentoring. Sure. Do you get that sense that you're achieving more uh with with what you're doing? you know, in, in your own business, you know, now you put yourself in front of that live audience. Now you've yep. uh, got people, you know, eyes on you and you're constantly having to think about um, the direction you're pushing in, why you're pushing in that way, uh, yep. especially with a mentor and as well, when you're kind of having to come up with uh, um, things for other people. Um, have you, have you felt that's, uh, that's benefited your business outside of that? I, th- <clears throat> I think I was always going to do what I was going to do anyway. I think mm-hmm. I'm always I'm always going to do what I do anyway. But what Gary's helped me with was was really understanding what a micro failure looked like and what a macro failure looked like. And talking about, I've always talked about the things I know rather than the things I don't know. I've mm-hmm. always wanted to learn on a daily basis. And I, I continue, people think I talk a lot, but actually I do a lot more watching of stuff all the time and learning because that gives me the gravitas to talk. For me personally, Giving back is such a is is my selfishness is that I want to keep my mental health in check all the time because it's not a good place to feel where I was where I was. What mm. helps me is helping other people. You know, like yeah. you can only feel one emotion at a time. You can't feel joy and sadness in the same moment. You know, it, uh, you know it's, it's it's a difficult one. So you know, I now realize what my strengths are, and that is my my character you know my 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 positivity my my real get up and you know want to take on the world kind of attitude if that makes sense and I also when it's not like that it's a it's a kind of opposite way around but the mentor inside for me because I I I learn differently to other people my my skill set of learning is when I talk I listen to what I'm saying so for example if I count to 10 in my head when I start used to meditate I get to five and forget what I was talking about and I wander off to think about fluff, fluffy sheep and clouds and stuff and have to remember to go back to one again. Whereas when you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you can literally focus and hear it and say it. So I think some people are good at reading stuff. Some people are good at watching stuff. Some people are good at doing stuff. You know, there's three kind of types of learning. And I think mine's really about watching and then I can pick it up. So the mentoring for me is a selfish thing because it helps me again, selfishly, really, it helps me explain a lot of the things in my head, if that makes sense, and yeah. about stuff off. Like like tonight, I've literally you've you your way of explaining things I'm thinking about just ironed a few things out. I went, oh, yeah, you, I felt it. I, I kind of knew it, and you've just nutted it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, got it. See, I I did um I did a, a weekly video blog um for best part of two years um. It took a lot of effort, but what I found was when I was doing a lot of mentoring, I was kind of doing this video blog on me and work, 
uh, talking about work and uh, you know how to maximize everything. It was not too serious, you know. We had a, a laugh doing it, and a lot of it was us messing around. But I found you have myself, to do it. You have to do it fun, otherwise, but it doesn't. Go, the information doesn't go in. Yeah, but what I found was I I learned so much um, whilst I was doing that. I think that's been one of my uh, my quickest mm-hmm. learning curves. Yeah, because um, when when people would come up to me and ask me a question about business or uh, want to come and sit down and, and discuss. Uh, their business ideas and get my input on it they'd ask me questions that I didn't have the answer to and I would have to sit there and think if I was in that position how would I do it and I'd learned a lot that way but then also doing the the video blogs um I felt like a lot of eyes were on me a lot of people were watching me and I always had to be on my a-game and because I was always then determined to be on my a-game I'm always thinking about um you know, how I can create maximum impact with what I'm doing so that I then have something interesting to talk to the audience about. Um, it's funny when you watch, the, when you watch the Gary Vee stuff, but yeah, when you watch the Gary Vee stuff, you watch one video, you can watch them all. They're exactly the same. Yeah. There's, you know, there is, they're, they're identical. So, you know, there's predominantly things that, that it, it will take him a whole year to work on a new phrase that he's working on to, to figure it. It takes him a whole year to figure something out about himself. So like a, a golf analogy, it takes two years for you to change just one thing in your golf swing to make it work. You've got to keep doing it on a daily basis. I think when you work yeah. on that level, like, like where you are, Sam, is that, it, you know, you have to sort of wait for those things to happen before you get the chance to talk about them. You can't. And I said, I watched Ian Wright talk about this the other day with his mentor, mentor and stuff. And he said, where people go wrong with mentoring is they try and say too many churchalisms when they're trying to be very have something to say that's very impactful and i run a i run an oi oi community group with a load of people in it and i always felt that pressure to say something that was going to change the room or or add some positivity or add some vibrance and get get the kickstart the conversation or say something and mm. right he said something the other day where he said the most important thing about being um, a coach rather than, men- you know, there's a dictator, there's a mentor, and then there's a coach. And there's three types. And I love coaching now because I think that's, like I said, about the, going back to the UK public. If you if, if you tell me tonight you're going to watch a film and I say, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll watch that. It was, uh, yeah, he dies at the end. You'd be like, fucking idiot. I, was, I wanted to watch that. Like, why do I want to know that? Like, you don't want to, you don't, don't want to play. Does that make sense? So I think the UK audience needs to be coached. So mentoring is sometimes is hard because you you don't want to give people too much of the answers until they they're weak enough where they go, can you just tell me the answer to the question, please? And a lot of people want to be coached, and I think what I've realised now is actually just being there for someone and saying, just just liking a post, just saying great work. Um, if you need any help on this in future, let me know. Just those little things, I think, really add up at the end of the day, they add up to more things. Um, so I, I'm trying to work that in now because I realized that every time I kept trying to say something in my group that was poignant and strong and powerful and direct, it would always, the, the room would go quiet. Like, like mm. mum and dad have come in and said, don't talk anymore. You know, like, you know, like when you're, yeah, especially, when, that especially you, when you're you a boss. take away the focus from what uh, people are, you know, in, in that scenario, you know, if it's a group chat, someone puts something in there and you, you go in really hard with, uh, you know, that top level, big, impactful stuff, you're kind of taken away from what they've done. Uh, it depends on the platform. You know, when, when it's a, like a video that yeah. I was putting out, like the vlog, you know, with that, you don't tend to interact with it, that audience in that way. Um, so I found it quite uh, it's Because it's post-production, isn't it? It's post-production yeah. stuff. You're yeah. posting it and then you're having to engage after mm-hmm. what they've interpreted it but as I, rather than that's why that's why i do the live space see because i get the you know yeah. on my instagram channel i get the comments coming in straight away that i can respond to see i i, I learned something the other week um we're uh, we're doing uh some work with a charity called men up north um okay. uh which is like a we really focus on on mental health and uh, um you know trying to Definitely try to love that people. um and I was talking to uh, uh, the guy who, who runs it. He's really insightful, and I'd, and and I've been talking about an issue that I'd uh, I've been going over with someone um, recently, 
where he was going through some trouble and I was trying to kind of give give my two cents on how to mm-hmm. um how to deal with that and how he could take the situation on. And um and Anger the chap who runs uh Men Up North, uh he said to me, you know, as men we always try and fix, you know, we always try and come in with that um that solution. And uh and that's not necessarily the best thing to do. Sometimes Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Situations that. can't be fixed. You know, yeah. you, can, you can't go and say, um, you know, this is going to be better for some things when they clearly yeah. can't. Uh, so being able to sit back and say, you know, how did that make you feel? What are you going through? Talk to me about it and, and that side of things. Yeah. That, that was something that, um, yeah, I didn't learn that until about two weeks ago because I've always been in that, that fixing mindset. But um, Really? That's, that, that, that's, 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 that's that little bit, like I said, about momentum, that little thing that you just went... Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, oh, oh, that that feels different. Yeah, and it, that, it just that, makes sense. that really worked. Oh, let me let me press on that a little bit more and see how that works. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I went back to that guy who'd who'd um, been sharing his problems, and I said, um, you know, talk to me. I won't fix it. And uh, and it, yeah, it was uh, it was quite yeah. interesting. But yeah. Um, yeah, that that was that was huge for me. But in terms of like you know me growing. I, I definitely found when I was doing the vlogs, when I was putting myself in that position where I had to kind of um, create something valuable for the person consuming my content, um, I was always thinking about how to better myself, how to come up with valuable, insightful things. And I, my but learning I, but I, but do you know what? Do you going to laugh and jump in on that? Because uh, it goes back to the bar mic, doesn't it, right? Yeah. It, like, it depends on the audience. If I talk to someone who's never detailed before, like yourself, about how the products work, you'll be like, shit, the bed, you're a genius. If I talk to someone who's been doing it for 20 years, they'll be like, you're a madman. So, <laughs> so you know, what we were talking about earlier, like what Gary Vee says, is, is really the most important, powerful thing is really is about not being scared to make a mistake or win. It's neither mm. here nor there. It's yeah. factual that you're going to learn from yourself if you say something to somebody that they don't agree with, <laughs> right? right? That's the only way you're going to learn is if you say something, they go, well, I, I totally disagree, especially when you're working with clients 24-7 <laughs> and topics of conversation where I'm so just real and it's like you can see them going, you're thinking, okay, maybe they did like Trump <laughs> or, you know, or something else about <laughs> COVID or something about COVID. Yeah. They're like, you can see them going, well, I agree that you should wear masks. Uh, you got to wear masks or, you know, it just depends. And we never really know who our audience is because I think our audience keeps evolving and keeps changing as we keep growing, as we keep evolving. Our, our demographic changes, the people we reach out to changes, you know, fashion changes, everything changes. That It's hard to know what, who we're speaking to at that specific time. Even like to, a, to an instance where someone could read your post right now on, on, on Instagram and had a shit day and take it the wrong way and read it tomorrow in the best mood and has the best day, you know. Mm. It's it, it, it's literally the same person had a different day and their impact on that situation. So I think when you understand, like I said, going back to hairdressing, I now understand that it's so ironic that I wanted to be so good at this job, right? So good that I str- studied so hard when I realised just recently that nobody can stand where I stand when they do their hair. <laughs> So I know it sounds really obvious, but the point of the conversation that is you don't realize that no matter what you do, you're talking to an amateur. We're the only industry that professionals cut hair for amateurs and ask them how they got on with their hair when the (laughs) obvious answer is it's going to be awful, right? Because they're (laughs) rubbish. Do you know what I'm trying to say? They're going to be rubbish. Why would they come back and say, Mate, you nailed that classic grad last time. When I just whipped the hair dryer from side to side like this with a vent brush and chuck the product through, I was banging out for days. I could have come back six months later. This was still, it was, this was amazing. Especially when you use those specific scissors. Like, and by the way, I could take my head off these days, put it in front of me and do the back really well. Like, not going to happen, right? So, <laughs> you know, only recently did I realize that I don't even ask the clients how their hair was anymore because the fact is, I'm never going to win. Because no matter what happens, it's my fault. 
if they can't do it, even if they're just bad at their air. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it, the advice you're talking about, mate, is what I'm trying to say is you, you're you talking about putting pressure on yourself to give the right advice and say the right oh. things and do the right things. And you can absolutely get analysis. You can get paralysis by analysis, can't you, where you overthink the problem that it becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I, I'm a nightmare for analysis paralysis. Uh, it's a creative I'm, I'm, brain. That's what happens. It's, it, you get you get mind fucked with the with your own thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to tell you, you know, when we were we were doing the um, the new shop, I I spent days trying to find the right coffee. Table. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're and, a detailer. You're um, a hairdresser. You're a barber. You're a detailer. You're a painter. You're a decorator. You're a barman. You're, yeah, all, you're all the above. Yeah, I, you know, I, I I love the detail though. I've always felt um, when it comes to brand, when it comes to business, you know, you're you're only as weak, or you're only as strong as the weakest link. And if if there's something in brand yeah. that um, does have that little, you know, stand out, doesn't fit, isn't quite right, then uh, you know that that's where the uh, uh, the issue lies. But um, but yeah, analysis paralysis. I've had it many times. <laughs> It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up in a minute, mate. And listen, there is so much we've delved in delving into tonight. And listen, guys, I've got loads of content I've got to make on the product. So subscribe to the Jolly Shield hairdressing YouTube channel because <laughs> I hope I hope you'll come on again, Sam, because I think I'll have to get you on again, mate, if that's all right, because I think it'd be yeah, great definitely. to go th- go through these products. Give some of the guys on my channel Instagram as well. We could do an Instagram live for the for for the crack, mate. That'd be that'd be quite good fun. We could do some whatever you want, mate. I'm here. And go through the go through the stuff because it's been thoroughly engaging, mate. Like this is my longest podcast I've ever done, mate. Because I really really try and stick to them to an hour, but so many great topics, so many great thoughts and opinions. <laughs> How long we've been you... talking? <laughs> I haven't got that... a in it. Hour and a half. Nice. We've literally nutted it. So you it's been so down to the listeners. <laughs> nah, bollocks to it. Straight out there, mate. All day long. Who gives it to us? Get out of it. You know, don't worry about it. Um, it just it goes out there because you know, sometimes conversations ebb and flow, and it's just how it is, you know. Yeah. Most you know, and I think what you've discussed tonight is a lot of the stuff that's what I love is that we haven't spoken for six years, seven years, right? Mm-hmm. And the great thing about it is we've ended up on the same mindset and thought process tonight after just, and we haven't spoke or com- or conversed or had conversations. But the, the first time I spoke to you, we literally went, we just went, boom, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm cracking on with this. I'm crack-. We literally were vibing off each yeah. other in the thing. We just, we just smashed it off. And it was like tonight, I haven't seen you for so long. I've never, even, I've never even, spoke to you face to face ever. Do you know what I mean we wasn't even doing video calls back then? <laughs> Phones weren't even allowed to video call back then. We didn't even have the functionality. So <laughs> yeah. um it's been fantastic to have you on the show, mate. I really appreciate it. It's been really good, really good, really beneficial to everything I'm doing on my other side of the business. I think, you know, it doesn't business is definitely universal. How we have to deal with our emotions that we've covered tonight is fantastic when it comes to running the business. I think everyone sees the upside to it. And I think <coughs> excuse me being a parent of a child is the same as being a parent of a business there's ups there's downs it's it's give 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 and always sometimes only five percent out mm. and it's supposed to be like that by the way because only the strong survive it that's how it should be that's how it should scale up they it shouldn't be allowed where you don't improve and you don't keep moving forwards it shouldn't be allowed that you could just come in and just do little for nothing and and get rewarded for it. It's not the way it should work. Business should be difficult. It should be tough. It should be hard. And only and 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 that's and that's one of the things why you can be employed. You don't have to run your own business. You can be employed. You can do your own thing. So, on that note, it's uh, I think it's been uh, it's been amazing, mate. I appreciate you coming on board, and I definitely think we should do a couple more, mate. Because I think it'll be absolutely mega. So. Uh, I hope yeah. you've got something from it tonight, mate, because it's uh, it's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's, it's been great catching up, dude. You know, we've uh, like you said, it's been so long. Um, happy to do more. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Pleasure. Can you um, direct some people to your brand and your website, mate? Where can they go and search stuff? Yeah, of course. So uh, apothecary seven dot com, uh, Instagram apothecary eighty seven, uh, Facebook dot com forward slash apothecary seven so yeah it's uh 
pretty much anything with Apothecary 7, you will find us. Excellent, mate. Thanks very much, mate. And uh, so, guys, that was a brilliant podcast. I loved having time talking to Sam. And like I said, feel free to go and follow Apothecary 87. If you want any advice on the beard, tips and tricks, anything like that, all the products, hit me up in the DMs. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Give us a little like and also comment down in the comment section about this video. Let me know what you think. And as always, we are on Spotify, we are on Pod- Apple Podcasts, and all the other podcast platforms. I've been Johnny Shield detailing hairdressing slash all the other things. He's been Sam from Apothecary 87. Thanks for joining the show, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.